Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and as you can probably tell from my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather, in other words, I'm sick. And so I'm going to make a video where I don't have to talk too much. And in this video, we're going to actually create our own uh, star system using Space Engine, and I'm going to show you how. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the new space engine is going to be publicly available really, really soon. And the planets it's actually able to create now are just beautiful. They're gorgeous. If you just look at how gorgeous this planet looks, it is absolutely stunning. So um, what, I what I actually wanted to do in this video is show you how you can use these new features in the new um, 0 0.990 version of space engine to create your own customized uh, star system. So here, all of these planets that you see, where are they? All of these planets that I have here, there's actually four of them, um, are actually in orbit around the star that was also created uh, completely manually. So I'm going to show you how to do this and let's begin. So first of all, you, you might have to actually get um, a file editor, specifically something that can edit text files. And I love using this one here. This is called Note, uh, Notepad++. It allows you to actually open up these files that we're going to be making, and it makes them very, very easy to read. So step one, open up Space Engine and fly around the uh, galaxy that you're in and find the star that you actually like, like for example, this one right here. Uh, although it's actually more beneficial to find a star that's not real. So these, as you can see, have proper names. So instead, we're going to look for a star that's procedurally generated. And these stars usually start with um, RS. No, that's not it. So let me just give me one second. I'm going to try to find something maybe a little bit farther away from where we are. Let's go here to the other side of the galaxy and click on something. And here we go. So uh, we're going to jump to it. And basically, as long as you like the star, so as long as you want this to be your primary star, uh, press Shift and F2 to bring up... Oh, turns out there's actually two stars. Uh, Shift F2 to bring up the options. And what you're doing is, you're doing this, export script. This will actually save the settings for this particular star in your uh, Space Engine folder. And so if I jump into my Space Engine folder, this is what it kind of looks like, right here under export, you're, you'll find a bunch of files like this. Uh, if you just do this once, you'll only have one. And uh, the first star I took was actually this, Sargas. If you open it up, well, let's just save this star as well, and we're going to export it. And here, here it is. If I open this up with a Notepad++, this is what it looks like. So from here, you actually just want to select everything, or you can totally just copy the file and copy it over to another folder. So this is a folder that we have to create where we're going to be storing our stars. So I'm going to close this for a second and go to Space Engine folder, add-ons, catalogs. You probably don't have these folders, but you need to create both stars and planets. Obviously, this is where we're going to put all our stars and this is where we're putting our planets. In my star system, I created this file called mysystem.cs. These names actually don't matter, apparently. You can name them whatever you want, um, but Space Engine tutorial recommends it to name it this. And if I open this, I already have my basic settings inside here for a star that I actually removed. So this is kind of important. This removes the original star and then creates a new star with the same name. So that way you can actually basically replace it with your settings. And here I put uh, some arbitrary parameters, including the distance. Uh, the type is G5V. This is the uh, solar type, basically like our sun. And these settings, luminosity, uh, radius, and mass are basically to represent the sun and temperature as well. And this is important, no planets, because otherwise it's going to generate uh, random planets when we don't want that. We're going to create our own. So all, this is all you need in here. And then once you save it, uh, this will actually create star uh, known as RS1228. Uh, now, so these names will depend on what the name uh, you have chosen. So like, for example, in this example, I think the name was a little bit different. It was RS8374. And once you place uh, that file in this folder, and if you start a space engine, you should actually see the star right here. It should already appear in your search catalog. 
Well, we're not done yet. Now we need to place some planets. Let's actually place just one planet to start. And so we need to do the same thing. We actually need to find a planet we like and explore it first. And then use its settings to uh, to do everything else. So here, uh, we have planets here. Let's just choose this one. I'm going to jump to it. And assuming you like what this planet looks like and what it has. Oh, wow, this spins really fast. Um, you just need to shift F2 again one more time and export script. Boom. And done. So there is that planet right here, I believe. No, no, right here. And uh, it's going to have a bunch of uh, names and features that you, you might not be familiar with because we actually want to procedurally generate our planets. In other words, we don't want them to look exactly the same. Well, unless you do. And if you do, you don't have to change anything. But I want them to be procedurally generated. I'm going to erase all of this. Surface and clouds and no ocean, no lava. All of these settings will be erased. I'm only leaving the last part, orbit. So everything else will be gone. And here, we can also change this a little bit. So uh, there's a few classes you can choose from. I'm going to change this into Terra because I want it to look like Earth. Uh, the parent body here is actually a little bit different for me, but it, and it's also going to be different for you, but you need to name this after the star you just placed. And in my case, it is called this. And uh, here, I'm going to change the mass to 1, 1 mass of Earth. Radius is going to be, uh, I think, about 6,500-ish. And you can change the rest. We're not going to actually do this right now. But I do have to change some of these things. And here... Period is basically how many years it takes for the planet to orbit the star. So I'm actually going to change this to 1. 7 major axis is astronomical units away from the sun. We're going to change it to 1 as well. Uh, eccentricity is eccentricity. And here I'm going to change it to 0. And the rest is not as important except for this value that I'll talk about a little bit later. So this is basically where in orbit the planet is located. But we can, if you just place in one planet and in a specific location in a star system, you just you can just leave this as is. You can play around these numbers just to see how it looks, but this should be enough. And so now if I just change, or I, I guess if I just copy all of this, and now if I actually save this file and take this file, copy it, uh, or cut it, I guess, and put it into the add-on catalog planets folder i will now have this planet located in this particular star system now because i already have a file with several planets in it what i can actually do is this wrong notepad uh i can do the following i can actually take this and put it in my other file so as a matter of fact this is exactly what i'm going to do as you can see, I already have a few planets here. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention is if a planet already exists somewhere, you might want to remove it first because that way it won't actually bug out the game. There's a bug in the game where the planet might actually disappear completely if you place it twice. So I'm placing a planet called Earth System 2. There's another planet, Earth System 3. There's a, actually a few planets here. And now we're going to add another one known as Planet 1. That works. And this particular object is actually going to have a slightly different anomaly and let's also maybe give it a slightly different setting energy axis so it's it's actually going to be just a little bit closer um to the star than the other planets and now if i save this and basically jump back into my space engine i can look up my planet one which is right there and jump to it and just like that you find yourself on this incredible looking world that is a Terra, a temperate oceanic Terra with an average temperature of 17 degrees Celsius. And it's orbiting the star we just generated, which is right there in the background. And because I had four more planets there, you can see all of them, if I zoom out a little bit, there they are. There's four more planets right there. So if I accelerate this now, you will see that they actually started orbiting around my star in a very interesting and peculiar orbit. It looks a little bit better from this angle. And the cool thing about all of this is that you can actually modify whatever you want and you can literally change the look of the entire star system to how you want it to look. So here, all of these features can be totally changed. You can change how the surface looks. You can play around with numbers and change uh, the fact that there's lava or no lava, ocean or no ocean. Uh, you can even give it a commentary tail, which makes it look extremely beautiful. So a lot of these factors can be changed. And if you want even more options, 
jump into the settings for planet Earth, which you can type by typing Earth. And then we're going to jump to it right now. And if you look at Earth settings under export scripts, you will find yourself with even more options such as clouds, ocean, atmosphere, uh, aurora, and uh, I guess that's it. So in other words, you can totally go crazy and create any kind of a world what you would like. It actually allows you to create whatever you imagine and you can play around with these and create worlds around black holes, um, around neutron stars, white dwarfs, you name it. So it's a pretty cool feature and uh, Space Engine is definitely one of the most powerful sandbox games in that, in, in that pers perspective and this is why I love it so much and the fact that it's free. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video and in the next video we're going to create an even cooler system so do come back because it might blow your mind or not. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.